Welcome to the Jackson Cloud. I'm Jamin. I'm Casey. And I'm Olivia. And today we are on Revelation 10, where we have a very confusing passage, which is not unusual in Revelation. Just took 200 episodes. We're fine. Then it took, then it took another 200 episodes, is what you just made me read. <laughs> then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head. His face was like the sun, his legs like pillars of fire. He had a little scroll open in his hand and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and called out with a loud voice like a lion roaring. Who am I? So was the wrapping in clouds like his clothes or was it like a, no, like a, a sleeping bag? I like think it's more him. that he's so big that it appears like he's wrapped in the clouds because we lose part of him to the clouds. Okay. What do you think? Well, we just got a lot of description. It's all very ethereal to us for like what on earth is going on here, right? But I feel like it just starts with I saw another mighty angel. Yep. So we only know the name from the bible's perspective of like two angels from jewish perspective somewhere between like seven to 14 ish angels are the big ones so who who is this <laughs> because it, it feels important right yeah it also feels kind of familiar the way that things are being described so i feel like there's I feel, who am I is what I said at the end of this. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Hang on. Go on. Never mind, it doesn't work. What? I just, I, he's wrapped in a cloud, there's a thunder song, I was gonna sing the song again, but it doesn't quite work. No need to be singing your songs. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we know it's an angel, right? Is uh, Our last passage, our last episode was about what seemed to be clearly like demonic angelic beings does this one make you feel demonic nope um i mean he does have legs that are pillars of fire which kind of maybe but we've seen that before have we mm -hmm. pillars of fire or legs that are pillars of fire uh we've seen both chapter 115 his feet were like burnished bronze refined a furnace his voice was like the roar of many waters. Whose feet? It was Jesus. Jesus' feet. So not, not exactly flames of fire in that particular case, but we still have some feet. Here's, here's the thing. This is why it's confusing, because we just we're told this is another mighty angel, but there's a lot of things in here that get confused with uh, theophanies of God throughout the Bible where God shows up things kind of look like this mm -hmm. but it's also uh, mixed up with the way in which Jesus gets described so mighty angel coming down from heaven he's wrapped in a cloud God has shown up throughout the Old Testament as a cloud uh, okay. pillar of fire at night uh, pillar of smoke by day um, when God's presence enters the holy temple and the tabernacle, it comes in as a cloud, right? So we've got these cloudy presence of God kind of feeling. Then we have a rainbow over his head, which was described earlier. Well, it's described in Ezekiel um, as uh, uh, the glory of the Lord is like a rainbow over God's head type of thing uh, that's in a cloud on a day of rain. Were you going to say something? No, I'm just trying to, I'm still trying to like picture this in my head mm. and the body so far doesn't compute. Like I got like the head part, but like if his legs are that big, how big is the rest of him? You know how what I mean? How big was it? Well, okay, so but in Revelation 4.3, uh, we get to God's throne room, and he who sits on the throne has, uh, around the throne is a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. So, like, 
now that's likened to the one sitting on the throne and his face is shining like the sun whose face shines like the sun jesus we've already seen that his legs are like pillars of fire as we saw earlier in revelation like burnished bronze wait was his face shining like the s-o-n or s-u-n yes okay <laughs> um but then it also said uh, his legs are like pillar of fire. So if we're thinking like burnished bronze as being kind of similar, like Jesus' legs were something different, but also a pillar of fire. God moved by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire at night, right? So again, there's a theophany. We're thinking of God here, but it's not God. It's an angel and it's got its right foot on the sea, its left foot on the land as though it has authority over all things, that nothing's outside of it. Wait, which? leg was on the sea and which one was the land the right was on the sea the left was on the land and which one's fire they're both, they're fire. both fire oh okay mm -hmm. um that would be so terrifying and then it calls out with a loud voice like what like a lion roaring which go ahead what go oh, ahead. are you about to sing a song is that what's happening no it's fine <laughs> I'm contained. Well, Jesus is a lamb, but when they announced him in the courtroom, what they heard was what? A lion. It's the lion of Judah. And then they turn and they see a lamb. They don't see a lion. But his voice is like a lion. It's roaring. And when it calls out, the seven thunders sounded. Thunders, we get this like God's voice is like a multitude. It's like roaring waters. So like all of these things feel very godlike and jesus-like but this just says it's another mighty angel who is this <laughs> the angel of the lord but we've established in many other episodes that the angel of the lord throughout the old testament into the new is jesus right so what's john doing here connecting them both together yes so this is the thing like a lot of people are like well, the angel of the Lord is in the Old Testament, who is clearly God based on the ways he always gets confused as God, but then he vanishes in the New Testament because Jesus is actually like so, God among us. So is this like John making like an answer key at the very end of the book? Well, we're halfway. 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 <laughs> halfway. Okay, well. This is John making a theological point. Because you read this and you're like, okay, this is God. No, this is Jesus. No, it's just another mighty angel. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. It is the angel who is God, who is Jesus. John is intentionally making a point here. Like, who is this? I, I don't know. Because if you keep going, uh, you're going to see. Well, let's keep going. Uh, I heard that. Uh, when he called out, seven thunders sounded, and seven thunder, th thunders, the seven thunders had sounded. I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, "Seal up what the seven thunders have said. Do not write it down." And the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and what is in it, the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it, and there that there would be no more delay. But in that day. It, but that in the days of the trumpet call to be sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God would be fulfilled. Just as, in, just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Uh, did you guys notice, I skipped right over it, what he was holding in his hand in verse two here? Yes, he's holding a scroll. Who was the one with the authority to open a scroll? Jesus. Who's holding the scroll? <laughs> Jesus. The mighty angel who is, yeah, Jesus. So, you know, it's it's not that Jesus is an angel, if you will. That's never really been the case. But like when you think of a spiritual being, angel is just a word that often gets applied right to it. Jesus has always existed because he is God. Um, but in, in this case, John is trying to like take the theology that everyone knows is the angel of the Lord and weave into it Jesus and God, because everybody already would have thought of like the angel of the Lord as God. Now John's like solidifying, also defining him as Jesus to make the whole point here. 
He's holding the same scroll that Jesus opened. He's described in all the similar ways that Jesus and the angel of the Lord were described. Because the angel of the Lord would ride that pillar of fire up and down the tabernacle in the Old Testament. So like, it's not shocking that he looks like a pillar of fire and things like that. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me again, saying, Go, take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter. But in your mouth, it will be as sweet as honey. So I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. Okay, we know what's on the scroll because we've already read through it, right? We've been through the seven seals every time they're cracked open. So with within those seven seals, we're used to like all these bad things happening, but they where martyrs are gonna end up dying as well. But ultimately the judgment of God is gonna made, be made uh, proclaimed and made full, right? So you can see that John is now entering into this uh, state of a prophet. In fact, this is probably why he's been brought to the heavenly court in the first place. Right here is his commissioning. Like, this is why you've been brought into heaven. This is why you're going to write this book of Revelation. You, like the prophets throughout the Old Testament, uh, who are also handed scrolls and told to eat them, now you are that person. So take my words, consume them, and it will taste like honey because it's the word of God, but it will be bitter in your stomach. Very similar to how the prophetic often works today. Uh, if you just look back throughout the pandemic, all the different prophetic themes that came up, if you wanted to speak on them, like it's sweet to know what God wants and proclaims over a situation, but it's also upsetting to have to sometimes proclaim those kinds of things. Like that's, that's part of the role of, of prophets throughout the Bible. Um, I was told, you must again prophesy about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. So John gets his commissioning right here from Jesus, who's handing him the scroll to take and proclaim. Yeah. Any other thoughts here? It would be very warm if you like for a fire. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Thank you very much. That was... That's the take home point, my friends. It would be very warm if your legs were on fire. And Olivia would also like to end by singing a song. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. And out of silence, till salvation, salvation comes. comes.